Hi everyone, I'm Kepler, a staff engineer and the team lead of the product enablement team at the Definity Foundation. And today I'm excited to tell you more about the pilot and the milestone coming to a conclusion. This comes with the release of the Orbit platform. The Orbit platform is a policy-driven framework that enables you to control your digital assets and smart contracts as a team. At Definity, we face these challenges of finding a correct solution that would help us with our workflows. This means controlling the treasury management and also smart contract management. As you might be aware, we have many projects, many teams that control their smart contracts. Some of these projects are controlled by individual members of the team. Those projects are mainly targeting testing environments and beta environments. Those environments are meant to be controlled by the teams while they prepare their software to be released for a production release. The way that Orbit helps you to solve those challenges is by enabling you to have a different ownership model. So far, you could put your software under NNS control, while you rely on the entire ICP community to approve all the changes. This can prove troublesome, and it only enables you to have certain types of projects that make sense for the entire ICP community. The alternative is that you can launch an SNS, where you create your own project community, and then the governance over that project goes over to the SNS. However, the other alternative is that you directly control your projects with your own private keys as individual members of the team. So this means that each individual team member have direct control over the smart contract, which might not be ideal. Orbit then gives you a fourth option, where you can represent your team on chain approval policies through the Orbit system. You have Orbit Station doing the user management and managing those policies for your team members. And then you have the Orbit Station actually executing on behalf of your team your blockchain interactions. Without further ado, let's dive into some of these features. We're first starting with the Orbit Wallet. As you can see, it provides you with multi-signature approvals, treasury management, and smart contract management. You can sign in with internet identity, while you can conveniently set up your pass keys to represent you with your blockchain interactions. After having signed in, you have two options. You can either create your own wallet or join an existing wallet. For the purposes of this demo, I've already set up a wallet where I have another team member, which will be calling John, that will participate for the approval flows. So John will also sign in. And he will share the wallet ID so that I can join. After having joined the Orbit Station that I'm connecting to, which is now my team Orbit Stations, you can see that you will land in a dashboard. In this dashboard, we have the tokens that we are managing, which in this case, we have ICP, the native ICP, and a test ICRC token. However, the unique value proposition of Orbit is that you can configure permissions and approval policies. And here is important to tell you, how does this work? If you go to the permissions, that's the first gate of Orbit. You have ability to configure view permissions and operational permissions for different areas of the system. You can configure it for treasury, canisters, users, or other system operations, such as upgrading the system itself. But even when you configure the operations, this only means that you can request for changes. It doesn't mean that you can execute. For execution, you need the approval policies. And here's where you configure your policies. As you can see for this example, we have low risk, medium security, and admin approval. For this setup, we require for admin approval, one approval from the admin, which means either myself, Kepler, or John will require an approval for any action or operation to get executed. Medium security means the same at the moment, and low risk means we can attach this to certain operations that require no approvals. 
When we attach the low risk approval policy, then this means that the user that has permission to request that operation, that operation will get executed immediately. Now let's make the system more secure. And we can update and now say that instead of requiring one member of the admin group, we'll require two. For the first time we make this change, this should get executed immediately. As you can see, this is now changed to two approvals from the admin group. However, if now we were to make this a little bit more flexible, we could then say, instead of having a fixed number of users, we want to have a percentage of users. So let's say we want 51% of our users. So if our team grows, then this policy also reflects that. And now this means that 51% of the admins need to approve admin operations. If we now save, it means this is now pending approval, which means that John will receive a notification where he now needs to go here and approve. And you can see the change. He can see that Kepler requested today to change the approval policy to be 51%. He can then approve, reject, or add a comment. Let's go ahead and approve this. And this now is changed. So 51% of the admin group is now linked to many of the operations in the system. So now that we, we initially looked into the permissions and approval policy, which is the core of Orbit and which powers this engine of evaluation, we can now look into the account system. This is where we manage treasuries. Here we have two different accounts, a vault, which is a more protected account. And we can see here the different policies that's associated with this account. In this case, it's the admin approval. And we can see that we have another account for daily expenses of the team. And we can see here that is associated with low risk, which means no approvals. So all of the users, in this case, all logged in users, have access to view this account, to change those account settings, and to transfer funds out of this account. Accounts can be associated with assets. At the moment, we have no more assets. There's only those two, but we can add more. And these, we can go here into the settings of your Orbit wallet and then add a new asset. Assets can be added in a convenient manner by a known list of assets, like adding CKETH, CKBTC, for example, or adding a custom asset. So for this example, let's add CKETH. Now that the asset is added, we can then link it to an existing account. Since this was the vault account, then John is also required to approve. So we can see the operation here, that it was adding a new asset. And we can see that's now adding the new asset to the account. And we can, for example, reject this operation because we don't want to associate this. By rejecting the operation, then we can see here the list of rejected operations. So this screen aggregates based on category, all of the requests that happen in the system. We can see completed requests, rejected requests, filter by time, and check who was involved in rejecting this, for example. So in this case, we can see all the changes and we can see that this was then rejected. And we can see John rejected it. While well, accounts is one of the examples we have, inside of it, we can also do transfer of assets. And for transferring assets, you have an easy way of doing so by setting up an address book of known addresses, where you'll then have an autocomplete where you can pick from your address book, or you can send to any other account of your choosing. 
So in this case, let's go to the vault account and send some assets to the expenses account. Let's send an ICP out. This again requires approval from John. John then sees that I'm requesting to transfer 10 ICP and it will approve. After it approves, then the Orbit Station will execute this. And remember, the assets in, in all of the smart contracts that the Orbit Station controls are under its own control. And then the users are only business logic associated with your Orbit Station. We've seen that the assets had came out. And now we can go to the other main feature of Orbit, which is Canister Smart Contract Management. And here we can see two smart contracts that we've already set up. We have a counter smart contract, for example. We have a website as well. We can associate labels with it, and we can mark them as active or inactive. When adding a new smart contract, we can, let's say, create a test counter. Then we can add, let's say, another testing version of this. We can then add some cycles, set up the permissions. So let's say the permissions is for all logged in users and the approval policy, which will also say this is low risk. The Orbit Station will then take care of creating this canister for us and add it to the list. Initially, the canister, as expected, has no module attached to it. So we'll then install it. So now we've installed a very simple counter canister, and we can configure what we can do there. So for configuring what we can do, we can have access to the methods. And in this case, we only have a get, an increment, and a set method. We can also add access to all methods. And we can say that this is also a low risk operation. So we'll approve this, which means that now all the users that have access to this canister, they will now have access to call through the orbit station all methods of this canister. So let's call to get number that's currently there, which we're expecting it should be zero as the first option. And then we can also use the other functionalities that we've announced recently, like snapshots. That's also available here. So you can now take a snapshot, which means that you will store all of the memory of the canister, the was a module and everything that it contains under the subnet that the canister is located, and you will at a later point be able to restore to it. Not that we've done so, we can then increment again. After incrementing, let's get the value. We should now see two. Maybe not yet. Actually, before it was zero. So now we can restore, and we should get back then zero. Not yet. Yes. Now we can we see zero, so the operation was executed. Well, this is a very simple smart contract, but sometimes we have more complex examples. Maybe we're managing a website. We need to keep it topped up, so we can do that as well here. We can send some cycles through it, which will take out of the cycles of our orbit station from our team and send to this managed canister. We can also configure to monitor this canister, which means that we have certain strategies where we can configure how many cycles we want to send if it drops below a certain threshold. Or 
Alternatively, we can also upload assets and do all of the complex operations that we need to do with our website through our CLI command tool. So in this case, I have a light background, but as developer, I really like dark mode. So I'll update this version. So I'll go into the terminal now. So now that I'm here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the identity that we have here and we need to associate this identity with our user in the ARP station. So we go to our user. You see that we have, at the moment, just the internet identity associated here, but we want to also add the identity that we're using through our terminal. This means that these two identities will be able to operate on behalf of this user in the ARP station. John will now approve this. OK, now that we are back in our terminal, we can see that our identity is associated. And we can see that we are Kepler with, identified within this orbit station. And this is all the privileges that we have, all the permissions. So now we need to call into it so we can create a request to update the permission so that Orbit Station can and our identity can prepare things, so send assets into this asset canister, which we're calling the website, which should now be done. And then now we can change the, the background to be black. not mistaken, yes. We now can upload. And we can check to see if it was updated. And we can see the orbit station then executed and it changed the assets of the asset canister. So now we have a dark mode. So you can now use the CLI to have your more complex setups where you can associate it with your continuous integration flows and have all the team operations using the FX orbit. All right, now the demo is finalized. Just to recap, we went through the orbit platform, how it enables you to represent your team on-chain approval policies, how it enables you to do treasury management, smart contract management through the orbit wallet interface, as well as through the CLI. I hope you now are pleased with what Orbit brings to you and the new ownership model you can now have within the internet computer. And you can now try it through orbit.global. And that's all from me. Thank you.